Hey guys, Luke Pruitt here with R. Jackson Home. Are you anything like Jim and I? Do you love what you do, love sharing your work with others, but have a hard time trying to figure out how to get it out there? Well, we've got the man for you, Kevin Adelsberger. He is fantastic at what he calls holistic marketing. He brings together your vision for your work and how you want to share it to others and brings it directly to them. Check him out, kadelsberger.com. You won't regret it. Holistic marketing for you and your business. Welcome to our Jackson home, front porch discussion without the front porch. I'm here joined on the board today by my co-host, Luke Pruitt. How are you doing, Luke? I'm great, Jim. Great to see you this morning. Fabulous. You know, I really love this time of year. It's the holiday season. There's a lot of love in the air. You can even smell the candy canes coming up, just <laughs> offset with a little, uh, like, turkey edge. Yes. Yeah. It, every, I don't know if y'all fell asleep with overindulgence on turkey. My family did ham. Did, did you do turkey for Thanksgiving this time around? Man, I just, uh, I'm a green bean casserole fiend. I love it. But let me tell you, first time ever started listening to Christmas music prior to Thanksgiving. It was that cold. That, See, that's how it was all in. I'm in a different camp. I think Christmas music plays way too early in the season. Yeah. I, that's where I'm traditionally at. I mean, I usually uh, despise Advent being consumed with pure Christmas music, right? Because I, I like my right, season. Right, right. flow, Thanksgiving. You appreciate some history of our nation, and then you kind of feed into it. But I'm all in on St. Nick this year. And, you know, speaking of seasons, and how's this for a segue, um, all throughout the year, you've got different sports seasons. You've got football season, you've got baseball season, yes. you've got basketball season. Heck, you may even have a curling season. It's a little Scottish sport. Right. But who do you go to to find out what's what in the world of sports? This guest we have here today, Brandon Shields, yes. sports editor for the Jackson Sun, our local newspaper, is here. How you doing, Brandon? Uh, I'm doing great, and that was a great segue there. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. I was like, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Turkey, how are we going to get to football from there? Yeah, Good, I leap from segue to segue like a frolicking gazelle. That's exactly right. And food and football, that's like synonymous. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially in the South. Now, um, tell us, uh, Brandon, where do you hail from originally and how you found your way to Jackson, Tennessee? I don't know if you're a Jackson native. Or I'm not. Um although I'm starting to feel like I am one now. But uh, uh, I'm from Cloverdale, Alabama, uh, which is a small community about the size of this room, uh, just across the state line from Collinwood, Tennessee. Uh, literally, my parents' house is two miles from the state line. And uh, um, grew up there, uh, stayed in that area until um, I graduated college, graduated from North Alabama 10 years ago this month. Wow, that UNA? Yeah, yes, sir. You're our second UNA guest. Oh, who's, awesome. who's the first one? Cole Sanders. Okay, all right. Valba, yeah. well, go Lions. That's right. Um, and uh, uh, worked at a couple of small papers uh, down in central Alabama, uh, a couple of towns, uh, Coleman, Alabama, and Alexander City, Alabama. Uh, and then in um, 2007, I started uh, figuring it was time to make a move, and I saw the sports editor's position in Jackson, Tennessee was open. I said, what the heck, let's uh, – I'll apply, and the worst I can do is not get a call back. And sure enough, I didn't get a call back for about two weeks, and then they called me. <laughs> yeah, I, that that's a, like a motto for me. You you don't know unless you try. Exactly. Someone says, "Well, you you know they they won't take you," or they was like, "Well, you know for sure they won't if you never try." Right. And speaking of um, applying and trying for different things, what, at what point in your life did you decide? Journalism, and I mean particularly sports reporting, sports journalism would be your career path. <clears throat> well, I guess it was kind of always on the fringe of right. of kind of my plans. Were you uh, always interested in journalism, or no? I was actually interested in being the power forward for the Chicago Bulls growing oh. up. Oh yeah, um, but uh, taking Rodman's spot, or what's that? Taking Rodman's spot. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, di I didn't know how long he would last, uh, uh, you know, until I got drafted uh, in the NBA in uh, the 2000s. What, what would have been your draft class? Well, if I'd gone early, I guess it would have been anywhere from 2002 to 2005. Okay. Um, NBA needed some help during that era. Yes, they did, and I think they still do to an, to an extent. Um, but um, 
apparently uh, no one in the NBA or college basketball or my high school basketball program thought that I was uh, tall enough or athletic enough to play that any position. So uh, that dream kind of died around 11th grade. Um, but I still stayed around sports. I uh, managed the bat. You know, I, I made the B team in, in 10th grade. Then 11th grade, I didn't make didn't make the B team. But then I asked the coach, I said, can I still manage the team? He's like, yeah, sure, come on. So, you know, kept stats and made sure the team had the water, you know, water cooler filled and all that good stuff. And I thought, well, you know, is there, is there you know, could I coach? Could I do something like that? You know, what kind of majors could push me into dealing with sports once I got to college? Um, and I actually emailed the, uh, the the sports editor at the time of the paper in Florence, uh, the Times Daily, um, you know, just kind of asking him for advice. Never got a response, so I just kind of put that to the side. Um, went actually with geography uh, as a major. Hmm. And uh, saw after about a year that wasn't going to work. And in the fall of 2002, went in and told my uh, uh, one of my uh, professors, I said, uh, sir, I, Dr. Gaston, I, I think I'm going to change my major. He said, why? And, you know, kind of went over that whole thing. And he said, all right, where are you going to change it to? I said, I don't know. He said, what are you going to do for the next 60 years? I said, I don't know. And he said, well, you know, if time and money weren't an object or weren't a limit, what would you do for the next 60 years? And this was in October of 02. I said, well, I'd go home, make a big pot of chili, and watch football in, in the World Series. <laughs> he said, well, you need to go figure out a way to do that. Wow. Um, and after a few days of thinking about it, sports writing was kind of what I came up with and gave that a shot. And it, I found out pretty quickly one I could do it and two I had fun doing it so yeah, see I'm a firm believer all throughout business artistic history you hear of people doing that like Milton Hershey uh, knew that something he would be doing would be candy based and he tried a bunch of stuff and failed 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 but he never gave up that central dream of making candy and eventually mm -hmm. hit it in chocolate and you have Levi Strauss who was trying to get uh, become a salesman for denim as something other than garments, right. and he failed at that, and then he switched over to pants, and that's that's why you should never give up on your dream. It may not come true specifically in the way you may think it'll happen, but if you just keep that dream alive, eventually you will find some way to come back around it. Because I personally think that God gives us all talents, exactly, and that is what the talents you have. Are, first of all, should be used because if you remember the parable of the talents, you know, mm -hmm. God expects you to use them in some form or fashion. But I think they're a mirror into what you should be doing with your life, the talents that He gives you. Mm -hmm. Now, using the talents in the Jackson Sun, uh, I know journalists will often be called out to report a story on a moment's notice. Is, is that the same with a sports editor? I mean, what's a typical day life like in the life of a sports editor? Um, I guess maybe that is a possibility for us. You know, at a moment's notice, a, a, a story being maybe not to the extent of a news writer or photographer or somebody like that, because most of our stuff is already pre-structured. You know, we're going to go cover the games, yeah, or we're going to do a feature story, an athlete, or or a, a coach or, or a team or something like that. But every now and then, you know, there will be a coach that resigns. There will be, an, right. unfortunately, sometimes there will be an athlete who gets in trouble and. You know, we feel like we've got to do those stories, and and you know, uh, unfortunately, sometimes athletes or coaches pass away too, and we've got right. to do those stories. Um, and those are really the days where you kind of feel a little more like a journalist than a sports fan. Right. So it's it has happened, but it's rarely like a Perry White, Daily Planet sort of things. Like Clark, we need you to cover the game of Mississippi versus like. <laughs> usually, you have some bit of warning. Right. And right. in fact, most of my guys, I let them, I have their own, uh, 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 you know, they have their own beats. And uh, within their own beat, they tell me what they're covering. So, you know, it's kind of some, literally there will be some days where I'm like, all right, what do you, Craig, what are you doing today? All right. Awesome. And I'll I noticed on, uh, when I was doing the research for you, I noticed a photograph of a t-shirt that said official member Brandon's Beasts. <laughs> Who are the Brandon's Beasts, and should we be afraid of them and get protection from them, or what are they? Okay, you should be afraid of them, but most of the time they are their protection. Um, right. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, 
I'm, I'm completing my fourth year of being the main guy doing the high school football coverage around here. And um, a couple of years ago, uh, my bosses uh, and I were talking. We were like, uh, you know, we, we need to come up with some kind of weekly way to honor the guys who are out there playing football, but they don't get the ball, so they don't get their name in the paper. Right. Um, linemen, defensive players, uh, that, that kind of player. And um, uh, they said, we need to give it some kind of catchy name. And I'll be honest with you, Brandon's Beast did not roll off the tongue as comfortably as it does now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, now on every Monday in the paper during football season, uh, you'll see a, a list of linemen or defensive players that came up with some big plays or whatever that uh, – they are in Brandon's Beasts each week. So they're more noble beasts than scary beasts. The offensive linemen most of the time are going to be kind of noble, uh, I guess, because they're protecting the quarterback or the running back. Uh, but sometimes we'll get some defensive linemen that have 20 tackles, and, and you know, sometimes there's some injuries in those tackles. So. Oh, yeah. That, uh, back in high school, they did an interview with uh, one of the linemen of my uh, – high school football team and they says so what they had asked everybody what is your position uh, what do you do on the team and they they eventually got to him and says what is it you do on the team and he just looked dead in the camera and said hurt people <laughs> yeah, it's fine that very straight interest. out of rocky four <laughs> oh, yes. i will break you <laughs> well we're gonna take a little break here and when we come back we're gonna Luke is going to discuss all things sports related yeah, with Brandon Shields. High football season. Awesome. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I, uh, I recently became a subscriber. I don't know if you know this, Jim, to the Jackson Sun. Thank you. The last couple of months. Yeah. And we've, we've become huge fans of the Sun, and particularly your coverage on Mondays and Tuesdays as you all kind of expanded the sports section. Sure. I've grown to really love that. They're it's becoming like, regular guests here. We had Kenneth, uh, the photographer, yes, and now we have Brandon, the well, sports editor. And Aaron Harden is a is a former photographer. Oh, yes. That's exactly oh. right. So we love the sun and are just so impressed with y'all's coverage. And so Appreciate we want to kind of wrap up the the football season with you. It's become, the sun's become my son's way of like learning the Grizzlies players, right? There's always oh, okay. a picture of Conley. <laughs> or we'll discuss the difference between a Trinity Lion and a USJ Bruin in the paper. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> so we'll come back. We'll wrap up the football season. Keep listening. We're here with Brandon Shields from the Jackson Sun discussing sports. <laughs> With a menu that changes every day, made from organic and locally grown ingredients, including vegetarian and gluten-free options, the Community Cafe provides nutritious and delicious food, regardless of your ability to pay. At the Community Cafe, you have the option of working an hour to pay for your meal. Visit the restaurant at 218 East Main Street in Jackson, or check out their website at comunity.com to love to feed, to dignify. The Community Cafe has a place for everyone at their table. Hi guys, Jim from our Jackson home here. Would you or someone you know make a great guest on one of our future podcasts? Drop us a line on our Facebook page or our email address at ourjacksonhome at yahoo.com and let us know. You know, 2014 is getting real close to ending, and 2015 has some big things in store for our Jackson home. And we want to make sure that you're kept informed. So if you'd like to sign up for the Our Jackson Home email list, you can head on over to www.ourjacksonhome.com and sign up. And remember to like and share our Facebook page. back on our Jackson home with Brandon Shields talking local sports this afternoon. Saturday's the state championship games, am I right? Uh, well, actually, uh, for football, the state championship started on Thursday. Okay. Uh, but the only one that I care about is on Saturday. Okay, so. big one. <laughs> which is what game? That's the Class 2A championship between uh, Peabody, okay. uh, which is up in Trenton, 
I mean, they are playing Marion County High School. Yeah, it feels like that's been a fun run. I've been reading your stories with them, and it seems like they're a really good group. It has been, and I'll be honest with you, their regular season uh, wasn't a lot to keep up with because uh, their district – it's, it's kind of weak, and I say their district's kind of weak, too. The teams in their district's playing for state championships this week as yeah. Union City's playing on Friday. Um, but, uh, but this playoff run, the first game that I watched them in the playoff run was when they upset TCA. Wow. And I've watched them every week since then. And it's, it's, it's been fun getting to know these kids and coaches and, and watching them because three out of their four games um, that they've won in the playoffs have been comebacks. And it's been so it's a Cinderella run, kind of in a, in a way, yeah. Because yeah. uh, uh, in in that classification uh, before the playoffs, if if we were to prioritize the teams that we thought would get to Cookville uh, in the state championships, Peabody would probably be probably be third or fourth on that list. So, so were the state championships in Murfreesboro prior, and they've been mm-hmm. moved to Cookville, or? Yeah, in the past 20 years, they've been at Vanderbilt in Nashville, okay. and then they went to Murfreesboro for a few years. And then I think in 2009, uh, the Cookville slash whatever county Cookville is in, Chamber of Commerce made a, uh, a really good pitch to uh, TSSAA, and they moved it to Tennessee Tech and, and Tucker Stadium there on campus. Very cool. Well, well, let's talk – so first kind of talk about your coverage area of counties. And then, of course, we're kind of a Jackson-based podcast. We right. love the entire West Tennessee area. But I'm going to put you on the spot and say favorite Jackson high schools to cover or just break down the Jackson high schools. Let's get controversial, make some people mad here. <laughs> in the All right. Well, um, uh, we have 13 counties in our coverage area. And I told you I was listening to Kenny's podcast Kenny Cummings, our photographer, uh, riding over here, uh, he, he was wrong. We actually do cover Benton County. Okay. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Benton County. Yeah, and in Camden, the Camden area. Uh, but Benton, Decatur, um, what's under Decatur? I guess Hardin County, uh, and pretty much coming east. Um, and we don't we don't cover any counties that, that uh, cover or that touch our, the Mississippi River. Okay. Um, and the only county that that, cut, that touches the Kentucky line is Weekly County, where Martin is. Um, other than that, uh, come back down this way, 13 counties. Um, now, as far as in Jackson goes, um, there are nine high schools in Jackson, which I, totally baffles me. I mean, there's five public schools and four private schools and I'm wondering if there's even enough people here for five public schools Um, but uh, as far as the ones that I love covering the most um, which one am I at tonight (laughs) well said well what what's kind of been um, who surprised you in local high school football this year who's Maybe some players or a coach you were really impressed with. What, what's kind of kind of break down preseason hype versus kind of what's come to fruition this season? Okay. Um, well, as far as uh, preseason hype, uh, everybody in Jackson pretty much kind of went, uh, as at least in football season this year, about how I thought they would go. Okay. Um, so you were uh, prophetic at the beginning of the season. I wouldn't say that. Just knew what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Informed. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess maybe I, I would have thought that, that TCA would have gone a little further in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to Coach Butler. Yeah. Big fan of him here on the podcast. Blake Butler, uh, Kyle Aiken, who just won the Mr. Football Award, yes. uh, their quarterback. He's the um, He wrapped up his career by uh, setting the career passing yardage record in TSSAA history. Uh-huh. Um Ironically, he set that record the night that they got beat by Peabody, um, and and just to just kind of show you how much of a shock that was to me, them getting beat because I thought, you know, I, t- I mentioned earlier priority list of teams I thought we get to Cookville, TCA was at the top of the list, yeah. um, and uh, uh, you know I, I I remember just being in total shock that night, and uh, you know, going to Coach Butler, I was like coach i don't even know what to ask just start talking and i'll just kind of build off that and luckily he was he was able to talk but yeah there were a lot of people that didn't expect that to happen that night on the yeah, purple side sure. what, what's your favorite part of covering a week of football do you like the 
pre-game preparation of kind of scouting out who to go to, what games to prioritize? Do you like the interview aspect or kind of the conclusion of the articles? What, what, what do you enjoy about a week of football coverage? Dang, that's a good question. Um, I guess I like it all. And, and there may be certain weeks where something is a little more fun than it is other weeks like, like the week of Northside and Liberty. I'm going to love going and doing the interviews and, and, and uh, uh, talking to the players on both sides, talking to the coaches. The coaches, both coaching staffs are all really good friends with each other. And it's become the – this year was the biggest game in Jackson uh, as far as, you know, between Jackson schools. Uh, so that's the most populated rivalry, you would say, now is the, the Liberty North side. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, because that's the two biggest schools uh, in the city, I believe. Uh, I know Northside's the biggest school because when they redid the redistricting, Northside is in the biggest class. Uh, they're in 4A where everybody else is down in 3A, and I think Liberty was the closest team to be in 4A when they did enrollment numbers. Um, but, I mean, when they met, it was for a district championship. Northside was coming in undefeated. Liberty was coming in with uh, two losses to – couple of private schools that literally could be called small colleges so sure. we were all wondering just how good they were and, and they proved how good they were by how they uh, beat Northside that night but then there's other times where uh, there's a lot of good games and I've got to, I've, sometimes I will take two hours or two days to try to figure out which game I want to cover yeah. uh, because it's such a hard choice and then um, and then there's some days it's just just going and, and, and watching the game, uh, whether it's going to be a good game or a great environment. Uh, you know, the, the whole th the whole thing is, is, is fun. Yeah. Do you have um, – what, what are some – what are some favorite memories you would say of, of kind of covering high school sports in Jackson just as far as uh, some memorable games that you feel like you've been to or, or kind of memorable personalities that have come through? What have been some favorites? Well, as far as memorable games, uh, <clears throat> when Southside basketball won its state championship this, yeah. pa this past March. Go Hawks. That was the greatest ba high school basketball game I've ever covered. Wow, the championship game. Right. Um, now, I was only there for the championship game. Michael Odom, he coordinates our basketball coverage. He was over Another there the whole week. The uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, he, he does a good job. And um, he was over there the, the whole week. And, and I remember uh, Union basketball, uh, they were – the women's team had a big game on that Friday night of that week. But Southside was playing in the semifinals against CPA, who's kind of um, – put things in perspective uh, everybody remembers the miracle on ice yeah and when the the united states hockey team had to beat the russians everybody thinks that's the championship that was actually the semifinals wow. and um uh cpa is a private school they had won like 20 gazillion straight games and 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 they had beaten south side in the championship the year earlier and everybody was mad when they saw that they were on the same side of the bracket uh, but they got this big win, and we were at Union, and people, uh, older uh, senior citizen Southside alumni were coming up, coming up to us and saying, hey, you know, what, what's going on at the game? So, but then the next night, you know, after they won, I went over to Nashville and, and, and helped Michael cover it and went into overtime, and our publisher, Roy Heatherly, his wife teaches at Southside, and they were at the game, and they go to overtime, and I think they went to two, maybe three overtimes. I can't remember how many. But I remember after the first overtime when they were going to the second, I literally sprinted across around the court, up the stairs, weaving my way through people, found Roy at his chair. And I was going to ask him, are we going to be able to hold for this game? And I didn't even have to ask the question. He just looked at me when I got up there. He said, yes, you can hold, go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that was just a, a fun atmosphere, great game, and, and uh, uh, really a lot of great plays to, to make it a great game on both sides by that, both teams. That's uh, something I love and seems so cool about sports journalism is the ability to watch narratives unfold, you mm -hmm. know, from your preseason story – to the middle of the year when a team's struggling, to seeing them journey through the playoffs and have a shocking upset or a total victory. I, you know, Jackson High Schools are in an interesting place where I do think there's some cool rivalries. I think the best local high school football game I've ever been to was Melrose JCM. I think it was like 2004. It was a playoff game. The entire Melrose 
uh, band comes marching down outside the rock in the middle of the game. Yeah. There's a fumble drop because there's like 200 band members walking <laughs> in. Got the Melrose folks and the Golden Cleats. So there's some old school things I miss about when Jackson's public high schools were huge. But right. There's so many interesting rivalries now, like Liberty North Side, mm-hmm. South Side is some interesting West Tennessee rivalries. I was at a Sacred Heart JCS game the other day. There's a great basketball game. Sacred Heart is a sports program that's coming on, and their basketball is uh, – Building up to being competitive, they're in the same private school classification with USJ, so they don't play as many local games. Yeah. Uh, but 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 they're getting there, and I think they're going to be fun to watch here in the next few years. It is interesting. The Madison Trinity USJ Sacred Heart High schools are, are building some interesting competitive uh, high school programs. Well, we'll just kind of cutting away from high school football. What, mm-hmm. what are you? looking forward to going forward into the winter and spring with with local sports um well i mean uh, obviously basketball is get, getting kicked into high gear um uh, and uh you know kind of looking to see how south side you know if they're going to be able to uh, uh how effectively they'll be able to to to, to defend that state championship yeah. um they had three really good players on that team last year one graduated he was our player of the year uh, Jalen Barford, uh, and then another young man, uh, their big man under the goal, um, uh, Malik Hicks. He was supposed to be back, but he transferred to a prep school down in Florida. So that yeah. leaves Chris McNeil as the only superstar back. He, we're trying to see how much help he has. Late, they're on a four-game losing streak, actually, so they're still trying to get their identity and figure things out. And uh, but Coach Demond Fuller, he's a He's a good coach. He'll, uh, I imagine he'll get things figured out by by the time tournaments roll around in February. Very cool. Well, we're excited. We we want to make sure that we're really touching um, the sports community here in West Tennessee. Mm-hmm. It's so fun to see uh, parents and fans and high schoolers get so excited about the games. Uh, Union's doing a really good job right now. We're excited about. Yeah, the women's team program. is ranked number nineteen. That. Uh, uh, we weren't sure how they were going to compete, but so far, I mean, they knocked off the number one team in the country last week. That's pretty awesome. It's great. Campbell's built such an amazing legacy there that he inherited from Coach Blackstock. And I think Coach Niven's really finding his groove this year. They're undefeated on the year. And he just got his 100th career victory. Yeah. Um, we're, we're recording this, I think, on December the 5th. That's uh, right. It was last night on December the 4th. He got his 100th victory. So, so congratulations to Coach yeah. Niven. Thanks for – building a great program there and we'll talk more in the future we'd love to talk to you about you know lane's football program they've got going there interested in long term what happens with lambeth you know as they build will they bring sports to jackson and i think some interesting collegiate sport conversations going forward in i'm years. there hadn't been any indication of it but i'm hoping it'll happen eventually um uh, new administration there at the at the college with the new president within the last year and new AD within the last couple of years. I'm I'm hoping that that the Memphis administration will decide to to pull the trigger and put some sports back in there, even if it's just basketball. Yeah, it would be it would be really exciting. Seems like there's a lot of potential for for growth, and that's such a crucial campus to holding the midtown of our our community together. So Definitely, we're hopeful for maybe. A second tiger or a return of the eagle. I don't know how they would play that, but it would it would be quite interesting. To, the to UML see. Eagles. That I like it. I like <laughs> it a lot. Well, we'll be back with our rapid fire segment to, uh, oh, to Lord. powder Brandon with some sports trivia or entertainment questions. Maybe talk a little pro sports for a minute too, and maybe get what your favorite college team is coming out of Alabama. Were you were you indoctrinated into Crimson Tide or War Eagle or you close enough to the Tennessee border? How'd that work out? Well, I was close enough to the Tennessee border, but um, I like a winner, so roll tide. Oh, <laughs> Mary Cooper celebrating right now. All right, we'll be right back with Rapid Fire with Brandon Shields on our Jackson home. Welcome to our Jackson Homes Guest Editorial Minute. Today's guest is Seamus McTeague with his editorial entitled, How I Miss Scottish Sports. Hello friends, Seamus McTeague here. Now I know a lot of you are 
there is like in the basketball, in the football, in the baseball. But I've got to tell you, I've seen a deplorable lack of Scottish and Irish sports broadcast in the media today. I miss curling. I sorely miss curling. And I haven't been able to be a part of a good Highland Games situation for as long as I can remember. I would love to hurl a tabor, to throw a rock, or to just spend a wonderful day just watching three grown men just sweeping, sweeping and curling. We need more Scottish sports on the television. Don't you know it? We need more Scottish sports. And that was our one minute guest editorial with editorial guest Sean McTeague. What are you doing? I'm not finished yet. I'm sorry, but it appears we're out of time. Give it a mic. What do you think you're doing? Give, 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 give me back the mic. Don't make me go on a brave heart on you. I'll show you, brave heart. Luke, grab him. Freedom! Luke, don't let him get out the door. We'll be back after these short messages. Luke, lock the door. Where do real men go when they need a haircut? Shave, styling, shampoo, or a bit of color for those gray hairs while enjoying a complimentary beverage. They go to the Man Cave by Kristen Green. The Man Cave specializes in haircuts for men and boys and is located at 100 Federal Drive, number one in Jackson, Tennessee, between Special Effects Salon and the Office Lounge inside the House of Hair. Give them a call at 731-300-4070 or find out more at www.greenmancave.com. The Man Cave, where real men get their hair done. Are you overweight and inactive? Well, there is an exercise routine that fits your body type. Designed by award-winning physical therapist Beth Patterson, the Getting Back Into Life exercise DVD from the good folks at Obagon Fitness has three fun routines you can do that combine cardio and strength training. There's a routine you can do while standing, one you can do while sitting in a chair, there's even a routine you can do while lying in bed. You can lose weight. You can do it. One step at a time. For more information, check out their website at www.obigonfitness.com. We're back with our Jackson home. We're here with our guest, Brandon Shields. And something you mentioned in the last segment, Brandon, about the excitement, the drama of the game. Mm-hmm. It, and you always hear terms like the, the final score, at the end of the buzzer, nail biter. And for this section, our random fire question segment, I want to ask you, favorite sports movie? For me personally, it comes down to the movie Cool Runnings with John Candy. Mm-hmm. It has the greatest blending of comedy and inspiration because I've always been a fan of the underdogs that nobody believes in, uh, not even themselves in some level, coming up to win the big game or sporting event. I just love Cool Runnings. What is your favorite sports movie that you never get tired of watching? Uh, well, I'll be honest with you. I don't really watch a lot of movies, but, but the two that come to mind the most high school football movies uh, Friday Night Lights uh-huh. um, I mean because that's just seeing getting a look at that program that the Odessa is kind of the, yeah. the the pinnacle of high school football programs and they remember the Titans and um, I remember what it was 15 years ago or so that movie came out and you know I was a, I think a freshman in college and I was like you know I just want to watch a football movie but looking back on it now just kind of everything that that movie encapsulates and um, and what that message could mean in this city now, or in our country right now. Uh, uh, I wish a lot of more people would pull that uh, old VHS or DVD out and watch it right now. No doubt. There's, there's a need for reconciliation, and sports can often be that. And right. I wish more of our culture would embody what sports sometimes can. Of course, the thing with sports journalism is you're also there to sometimes pick up on the divide. Right. The Miami Dolphins story this past year. And mm-hmm. 
it is interesting how sports culture is such a picture of the best and worst of who we exactly. are in the best communities. And it's such a microcosm for the seriousness and the fun mm-hmm. and all of that. Um, so let's see. Pro sports versus college sports for enjoyment and viewing. Oh, college, definitely. Okay. I hate – I mean uh, – I grew up watching the Bulls in, in basketball, but as soon as Michael Jordan uh, retired and they quit playing defense in the NBA, I quit watching that. And um, Also, you just get tired of watching uh, sports where guys are getting paid millions of dollars a year and then they go on strike every few years or get locked out because they're not getting paid enough. we got to get yeah. you hooked on the Grizzlies defense. Right. Might bring you back in. <laughs> Favorite sports food indulgence growing up? Big League Chew, the shredded bubble gum, or flavored Gatorade? Uh, prob- I mean, it'd have to be Gatorade just because uh, I wasn't a big gum chewer growing up. But, you know, if, if I'm going to go play baseball or softball, I've got to go get the big chew now. It was always hilarious. I'd watch kids dipping into this big league chew pouch, and they'd be spitting. Uh-huh. There's nothing to spit. No, it's there's not. bubble gum. <laughs> but they'd be spitting just like they, they see their heroes spit, man. <laughs> What's your favorite bizarre sports tradition, either that you engage in or you see players engaging in? Ooh, bizarre. I don't know if you call this bizarre, but it's pretty cool every time I see it, and it's a local one. Uh, win or lose, South Gibson football. Okay. Uh, as soon as the, uh, uh, the the game is over, you know, the, you do the traditional the football teams and cheerleaders line up, they give each other, you know, shake hands, good game, all that stuff. Well, as soon as South Gibson gets done doing that, they line up and they'll and, – and the fans will come down on the fence on the sidelines and they'll come by and, and give high five to all the fans to win or lose. Uh, uh, I've seen that happen this year. It's their Lambo League. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the 70s, a baseball player named Reggie – I can't remember his last name. Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, he had a candy bar made after him. If you could pick – one restaurant here in Jackson to make a food item based on sports and you, what would it be? <laughs> like a favorite burger or a breakfast item? I was going to say, I mean, Taco Bell's the one I go to the most. <laughs> the Brandon Burrito. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the Taco, the Brandon Taco Beast yeah. or something like that. <laughs> well... This is sounding like a burrito meal. A burrito the oh, size yeah, a burrito of a burrito meal. Yeah. Yes, yes, I love that place too. The burrito, so. the Brandon burrito beast. Brandon's beast oh, burrito. Brandon's beast, Brandon's beast, beast be burrito. Yes. If you're listening, burrito meal, the Brandon beast burrito. Let's get that. Let's get that on the menu. Yeah. Does Sean yeah. listen to this? Their owner? Does he listen to this podcast? We, we need to prioritize that. <laughs> for him. And if you, Avenue does work with Sean. If you eventually listen, you could even have a discount if you can show proof that you're part of a local team. Get a little discount when you come in and get the Brandon Beast burrito. Or or if the guys that win come in wearing their Brandon's Beast t-shirt. Oh, oh yes. I like this a lot. Burrito Mill, we just unleashed an entire marketing campaign. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Like, <laughs> well, that's awesome. What what are... Um, I also know Sean don't like giving discounts, though. So. <laughs> well, I can't blame him. Uh, Listen, prices are reasonable. Though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Right Good food, too. That's exactly right. Well, what... Um, who, who are some journalist or what are some things that you think would be really fascinating to cover are you a guy that like longs to go to the olympics one day or what what kind of things do you love covering or would like to cover i'll be honest with you and there's probably gonna be a lot of people that hate my guts after i say this i don't care about the olympics at all i think people are shifting there after costas's pink eye i think people jumped off the olympics (laughs) well it wasn't the pink eye it was just for three years and 11 months and two weeks no one cares about gymnastics but then for two weeks if you don't care about gymnastics you're not an american that's right yeah i kind of get i get over that attitude pretty quick okay on this on that same subject but a little bit of a rabbit trail here uh you cover basketball and football the big sports what's the weirdest sport you've ever had to done a story on anything like curling or fencing or checkers or curling today I'm Scottish. I'm Scottish, man. What's the weirdest sport you've ever had to write an editorial on? I I was going to say, I did write a column on curling. Uh, 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 (laughs) Called it. Yes. Indicated. At my first uh, paper in Alex City, Alabama, the main high school in our coverage area is literally right across the road. And some days I would come in there. I would go into work and I'd be like, holy cow, I have no idea what I'm going to write about today. And, um, 
So I would there would be some days I just go across the road and and the wrestling coach and the and the baseball coach had shared the same office and I'd go in there and just shoot the breeze with them for a little while and and I went in there uh, one day during February of '06 during the I forget where the Olympics were that year. It seems like was it Seoul? That would seem right. I, I think that's right. Or maybe somewhere around Japan. Okay. Anyway. I remember Seoul being yeah. But anyways, there was a, it was like second period, and, and there was like a study hall slash PE type type class, and, and the and the wrestling coach and the baseball coach and a few wrestlers and baseball players are really in there, and they're all watching the TV. And when I walk in, it's like the TV's next to me, so I can't see what they're watching. So I just kind of lean over, and it's a bunch of guys that are sweeping a hockey rink. I'm like, why are they cleaning that, and why are y'all watching them clean it? It's curling. Get out of the way. All right, my bad. And I wound up riding a column off of just a, a bunch of us just hanging out watching curling. Well, it's a multitasking sport. Like you're saying, they're also cleaning the area they're playing. <laughs> because if you had, uh, like, if you just put a bunch of rocks on a baseball field, at least they'd be doing something. It's like, okay, pick up a random rock, throw it, knock the rock out of the park. Park is clean. And it would add drama because you the rocks are different shapes, different weights. You don't know what's going to happen. We need to, our Jackson home needs to cover all the sub sports in the area. You know, Roller derby, uh, drag racing, demolition derby. Park. Yes, uh, frisbee. Yeah, frisbee golf would be uh, good. We, we love disc golf here. On I think there's today. some of that on at Union too, right? Because I've they seen a few of the Vanderbilt. Yeah, I think last year at Ultimate Frisbee, which was awesome. <laughs> well, Brandon, thanks so much for being with us. Look forward to continuing to read you and um, find out more about local sports coverage in the Jackson Sun. So. Thanks for sharing your story with us today. Yeah, well, I appreciate the invite and, and appreciate uh, uh, telling him before before the uh, for the show. Just appreciate what y'all are trying to do. Uh, you know, we try to put positive coverage in the Jackson Sun too with our faith and practice uh, yes. weekly series. Y'all can read that on Thursdays in the Jackson Sun, and you know where we let local athletes just talk about their faith and and uh, you know glad that that that, that y'all are getting. Uh, uh, do, trying to accomplish the same goal as well very cool well i think you have amazing coverage I, for a sound for a town the size of jackson just blown away by all y'all are able to get out there and cover as large a framework as as skillfully as you do so you've been listening to our jackson home with jill wellhelm and luke pruitt thanks for listening we'll be back with you soon mm-hmm.